Well, luckily, inside the studio here, it is cool. And next week, it is going to be on fire, though, in Boston for UFC 292. Take a look at this main card. Aljo versus O'Malley. We've got Whaley Zhang versus Amanda Lemos. Magni versus Gary Garbrandt getting back in action against Bautista. And look at Chito Vera against Pedro Munoz. That is an awesome main card on our uh, pay-per-view next weekend in Boston. So, Kamaru. We got to talk about Aljamain versus Sugar Sean O'Malley. Aljo doesn't always get the respect that I believe he does deserve, but it's a tough fight against Sugar Sean. What do you make of it? It's a, it's a really really tough fight. First of all, let's just go back to that graphic. Like, I mean, <laughs> did, you, did they draw his abs in? <laughs> oh. I mean, damn. But uh, you know, Aljo is is a guy that continues to defy the odds, and he goes in there each and every time against fighters that should be able to beat him. He's able to take them down, and he's able to just impose his dominance on them. But Sugar Sean O'Malley is just a different type of striker. He's got different timing, different athleticism. You know, you feel like he's there, he, but he's really not. But then he puts a, a, a sneaky combination on you. And I can't wait to watch this fight because I think it's the new age grappler versus striker that we're witnessing. Yeah, and, and on paper, you look at this matchup, you kind of think Aljo should go and get the backpack. You look at a comparison of, uh, of Sean O'Malley, who's a compar comparable guy in the division. You look at Corey Sanhagen, that long, lanky style, predominantly yep. a striker. And look what Aljamain Sterling did to Corey Sanhagen. So you kind of think it has to happen. But as you mentioned, Sean O'Malley is a different type of athlete. He moves very quick on the feet. He's a lot more of a fainting guy, spinning attacks. Very dangerous type sniper that if he can stay in the center of the octagon and not get against that fence, he has a real shot in this matchup. Oh, and then what if we, I don't want to jinx it, but if we ever get a Sugar Sean Cody fight, uh, a Corey Sanhagen fight, though, that would be amazing. Oh, yeah, but yeah, Alan, yeah. how about the co main event? Zhang Wei Li, the strawweight champ, defending against Amanda Lemos, who beat Marina Rodriguez to get to this fight. What do you make of it? And Lemos is a killer. You look at her style powerful punches, powerful striking. She's the type of person that you cannot make a mistake against because Lemos has the power to knock you out even in this division. Now, Zhang Wei Li, she is so good. She's a dominant champion, and she's been showing new wrinkles in her game. Not only is she a terrific striker, but she's got the grappling. She's got the wrestling. And as of recently, she showed she could even submit top grapplers inside the division as well. This is this Kamara tremendous matchup, but Wei Li's a uh, champ that I feel like could be a champion for quite a while. Well, for just comparison's sake, Wei Li is the Chinese Ivan Drago. There you go. <laughs> I, I believe. Just a killer, created right? Yeah. For fighting. She is. And, I mean, she can do it all. I mean, just a perfect specimen. You see it in her combination. Mm -hmm. She can kick, she can punch, she can take you down, and, and she can defend very, very well. Because when she fought Jessica Andrade when she won the title, mm -hmm. we thought that Jessica Andrade, a powerhouse, was gonna go in there and be able to impose her style. But no, Sean Wei Lee showed her that, hey, I am the new age and I am the I am the champ right now. And so I think this is an incredible fight. I think it's going to be a tough yeah. <laughs> well, We're going right to get into some predictions about yeah. that fight a little bit later and also on the pre-show, so stay with us for that. But also on that card, guys, um, Neil Magny is stepping up to, uh, on short, you know, short notice, to fill in for Jeff Neal against Ian Machado. Gary and Camaro, I know, uh, you know, Neil Magny's a guy that's been around in the division forever, but you've seen Ian Gary in the, in the training room, so what do you make of it? Ian Gary is a guy that does not shy away from, he does not lack any confidence. I mean, he's showing it in his fighting style. Once he goes in there and he starts, get, when he gets going, he's a hard, he, I mean, just a tough guy to be able to deal with. But Neil Magny has been in these positions for countless times. Mm -hmm. I mean, talking about flying all the way to Mexico to fight Kelvin Gaslam and spoiling that show. Talk about beating uh, Rob, uh, um, Johnny Hendricks. Yeah. Talk mm -hmm. about beating all these guys. Neil Magny, if there's anybody that can step in on short notice and be able to go in there and disrupt the hype train. Yeah. I think he is the guy. He's the guy, right? I mean, he leads the division in, in wins, I yeah. believe, in a welterweight division. And Neil Magny's the guy that always reminded me of RDA from when we talked about earlier. If Neil Magny can outgrapple you, he's going to gra outgrapple yeah. you. Look for him to be trying to outgrapple Gary in this matchup. He's such a tremendous spiker, striker. But Ian saw something in this matchup. He called for this matchup mm -hmm. after his last win over D-Rod. So there's something in this matchup that he saw that he liked. He got the fight that he originally wanted. Now he just has to get the job done. Who wins the Bantamweight title at UFC 292 mm. and how? So is it Sean or Aljo oh, and how do they win? You guys win? put me on the spot Be honest here. here. Be <laughs> honest here. What's your heart? What's your head? Like, look at Alice, Alice. I have been known I like, to flip I don't know where he's gone. That's yeah. why. I, I have been known to flip-flop yeah. here. You know, I, I, I just, of course, on paper, I think Aljo. It wins this one, but 
I, I think it's just the perfect time. It's the perfect storm for a guy like Sean O'Malley. So I, I, I'm going to go against my gut here, and I'm going to go with Sean O'Malley. I had a feeling, KB. I, c- I could see it. I could <laughs> see like he was hesitant. <laughs> wow. I know. He's going I know, Sean. right? He's going with Sean O'Malley. I'm going to go with Sean O'Malley. I like, I like both guys. I really do. Um, but I would love it's to tough. see what Sean O'Malley can do with, with, with that. Who do you have, Alan? So I'm going with Aljamain Sterling. I'm going to get that, get that out of the way real quick. Something about this fight does make me nervous, though, because Sean O'Malley makes me nervous because of my pick on Aljo. Because on paper, this is an Aljo-type fight. As I said, the comparison earlier, Corey Sanhagen, it's very comparable to, to O'Malley. And you saw what happened mm-hmm. in that fight. He's able to get you down. If he can get him against the fence, I believe he'll take him down to submit him. But... O'Malley, something about him makes me nervous. His style, his feints, his ability to create things, his sniper style, he's going to have to be very careful with Aljo in this matchup. But if he can get him on the ground, I think it's a wrap. And I also do think that Sugar Sean has that experience of being in a big show. I don't think the moment will be too big for him, but I also do think that Aljamain is going to be remind everybody again that he's a champion and he's going to have that feeling to it. So let's take a look at the second question, though. Uh, uh, coming to you again, Kamaru. Who is the number one contender for the winner of the co-main event there between the champ, John Wei Lee, and Amanda Lemos. So who should be the next strawweight title uh, challenger? I don't want to butcher her name here, but uh, Yang Zhan Nan. Yang Zhan Nan. Yes. Oh, did I, was that was on the movie? You were right, yeah, you you close, close enough. I was close, but <laughs> I think I, I, her, she's impressive. In her last couple of fights, very, very impressive. The way that she dealt with uh, a challenge like, um, um, what's her name? Um, the grappler. Why am I yeah, about? yeah. Um, the grappler uh, in the division. Uh, Mackenzie Dern. Yeah, I'm yes. sorry. When she was I'm able like, to get Tatiana that Suarez, because I mean, that was my answer for the question. You know, <laughs> <laughs> she's 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 very very improved. She's got yeah. good defense, good striking, and what a fight for the Chinese audience. Well, yeah, obviously that was what incredible. a fight. It would be incredible. Two Chinese fighters fighting for the belt. This never happened before. Big reason to go back to China to really mm-hmm. blow it up. They have the, U, the new UFC Performance Institute over there. It makes all the stars are aligning. And as, as, as the champ just said, you know, you look at that win over uh, Mackenzie Dern. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Mackenzie Dern, you saw how she, how dominant she looked in her last outing. I think that one goes a far away. So Yan Xianan is my pick. Yeah, it's a great one. But Tatiana Suarez is coming on strong, as we all just saw last weekend. So look out for her. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.